Thank you for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields, and thank you for taking the time to subscribe and be part of this weather community. I do want to dive into the upcoming hurricane season, kind of look ahead a little bit because there's a lot going on. We are going to go from an El Nino to a La Nina, and we're going to see a lot of hurricane forecasts coming up out. They're going to be more alarming than they should be. There'll be a lot of there'll be a lot of clickbait out there, a lot of hype with them because in a La Nina season, usually you do get more hurricanes, but we don't know where they are going to go. That's always the thing they seem to uh, leave out, gets everyone kind of worked up. You really have to track these things storm by storm as they develop. So the hurricane forecasts don't really tell if we're going to get hit or not. So with that said, I also want to get into a large system that's moving across the U.S. toward the Caribbean. The rain, huge waves with this system get into the dust and a snowmaker for parts of Canada. That in a moment. But look at this. A Pacific cooling trend. This is the outlook for August. So as we get into the heart of the hurricane season, you see this blue shading here in the Pacific. That's a sign of cooling water. That means we're losing El Nino. El Nino, the water's really warm here. This is showing that we're going to see that cooling trend, which means we're going to see a La Nina. Well, what does La Nina mean? All of this stuff is just kind of global weather patterns. But in a La Nina, usually in the, the Atlantic Basin, so the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, there's more instability. That allows uh, clouds and rain, all of that to kind of build up, clouds to build up, storms to build up, gives us the possibility of more hurricanes and more tropical storms. And this here is in August. And you see this green shading here, that is showing increased precipitation available moisture out there. You need a lot of moisture for hurricanes to develop. That's telling me as we get into the month of August, we may not have a lot of dry air. We may not have a lot of that uh, Saharan dust around. That's a bad thing as a whole. So that just means things are more conducive for development, which is not a good thing. With that said, if we get these hurricanes developing, again, doesn't mean it's gonna move into your island or impact your home. It'll still be a wait and see. But the early signs are that we're going to have a La Nina, or at least trending in that direction, more moisture out there and more availability. Another thing I look out for closely are the water temps, of course. That's just one piece of the puzzle, but here, across the Atlantic Basin, this is the uh, temperature anomaly. This is uh, in the uh, orangey shading, the red shading we're seeing here. That's simply saying, hey, the temperatures for this time of year are running above average. We even had that this past season. That's why it was in El Nino, but it was so active uh, because of the very warm water temperatures. And you see a little bit closer, on average temperatures, much of the Caribbean, much of the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic are running above average. But as we get into the hurricane season, it's not just the water temperature I look at. It is the depth of the warm water. That is the heat content. If that depth of the warm water is substantial, that's a problem because as the hurricanes move on top of the water, it would just churn up more warm water. And that's what they feed off of, the warm water. Uh, so again, that's something I'll be watching out for, the heat content, not just the uh, temperatures. But uh, initially, signs are favoring definitely a more active hurricane season. So here's the list for the upcoming hurricane season, the 2024 uh, names in the Atlantic Basin. And again, there's different lists around the world. The Eastern Pacific has a different list of names. First name on the list is Alberto, Beryl, Chris, and Debbie. Ernesto uh, down the road, Francine and Gordon, and I do believe we're going to get deep into the list this year, but I'm not seeing that in an alarming way. Obviously, if you have more storms, the odds are that more will impact land, but we do not know where these are going to go. So I'll just take it storm. I'll take it storm by storm with you. Uh, keep all the hype up. I don't root for storms at all. I've been through too many. We know the devastation together. So again, a busy hurricane se season, yes, and I'll, I'll keep tabs on kind of these seasonal outlooks as we go forward. Forward. On top of that, in the short term, we've got a big weather maker, western U.S., parts of uh, western Canada. That's been moving in. few uh, uh, clouds here in the way of cloud cover. We've had that system leave Bermuda. Bermuda, we had almost tropical storm-like conditions yesterday with the gusty winds and the rain. And then on top of it, we're seeing the dust as we get back toward the eastern Caribbean. We've had a lot of that dust around. Thinking of you if you have some breathing issues. I was covering that more in yesterday's video if you need to take a peek at that. But let me show you what's next here. Now, I've been talking about the surge of moisture. This area here, just kind of a broad spin at this point, but it's going to tap into some of that moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. And as we go out in time, this is today into tomorrow, you can see the storm system developing, snow, especially the front range of the Rocky Mountains here. And look at that rain building, parts of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, a lot of rain 
happening here. Plus, Bermuda, there's another little system here. I'll dive into eastern Canada in a moment. But then you see here a very sprawly storm system, which means a very large storm system uh, moving across southeastern uh, United States, dipping back toward the Caribbean. So Cuba, for example, by the time we get into uh, Sunday, we're going to see that chance of rain going up. And then you see it just kind of broadly spinning here. And look at that rain that's going to be around across parts of the Bahamas, dipping back toward J uh, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Haiti, Dominican Republic, even Puerto Rico. We'll see a better chance of some rain next week. And really a slow mover in this pattern, there's not a lot to move, uh, move it through. It's not a very aggressive weather pattern. Sometimes you get fronts that zip by. This storm system, still around for a lot of us by the time we get into Tuesday. So this is a big uh, weather maker. Hopefully it does help with some of the dust and it will in the Eastern Caribbean. Let me show you these winds. Huge change in the winds and I'll get into the seas. That's really going to crank up the seas. So going forward here, let me show you. Let's take out time bringing into the weekend. This is Saturday. You see the winds here. This is where this storm system is. We're going to get those gale warnings out clearly for the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Atlantic waters as well. Things are going to turn very choppy, but let's get into the weekend. Now, as this system develops, it's going to bring in a surge of winds out of the northwest. You see here by Sunday in the Gulf of Mexico, we'll have some winds in the open waters of 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers an hour. Those will be some of the gusts, not the sustained winds. But then as we work forward from Sunday into Monday, we have this big sprawly system here. Look at that surge of winds here. And you can see the center of this uh, system would be right over toward the northern Bahamas and Florida on Monday, a slow mover, yanking down those winds out of the uh, north and northwest. Uh, and that will bring in the cooler weather. But look at this a big area of uh, rather strong and persistent winds. You see the uh, color coding here, kind of those uh, pinkish purples and the whites. So we're going to see winds consistently gusting 56 kilometers an hour to 80 kilometers an hour or 35 to 50 miles per hour in a large area, Gulf of Mexico, Western Atlantic, back through the Caribbean. This is a really big system, uh, especially for this time of year that's moving by. And look how it plays into the uh, seas. Our wave heights, both in meters and feet. Meters, here's your scale. Feet on the right-hand side of your screen to keep you covered. Now, going out in time, this is as we work our way into our Saturday system approaches, seas start to build as we get back toward the Gulf of Mexico, looking at about two to maybe three meters. So looking upwards of about 11 to 13 feet in some spots of the Gulf of Mexico starting tomorrow. And then as we pull forward into Sunday, that's when things start to really build here as the system starts to work through. And then as the system just kind of spins Monday into Tuesday and that surge of winds come down, look at those seas. We're talking about five to even six meters in some spots, that's upwards of uh, anywhere from 15 to about 19 feet in parts of the Gulf of Mexico trying to get into the Caribbean. And as we work our way into Tuesday, uh, waters offshore of the United States and Bahamas, they are going to be dangerous upwards of about five meters and still in the Caribbean. We're looking at about two to almost pushing four meters in some spots. So we're going to see them upwards of 11 to 13 feet. So these are dangerous seas, giving you the heads up on this. Uh, and we're going to see this again late in the weekend in through early next week. So thank you for getting that information out there. Let me zoom down closer as this system develops. You can see it here. Here we're dealing with the dust in Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, St. Uh, Lucia, over toward Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But even as the system moves across, it will help with the uh, dust by early next week. As we work Saturday into Sunday, there's the rain working into Sunday, Florida, uh, northern uh, Bahamas, central Bahamas as well, and across Cuba and the Cayman Islands. We'll see some of the rain. Some of it will scrape us by in parts of uh, Central America, Yucatan over toward Belize, but most of it right through here, northern Caribbean. So we're going to see a couple inches of rain or we could get some of the uh, totals upwards of uh, even upwards of 100 millimeters of some of that rain. So watching out for some substantial rain parts of uh, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos. And you see here, this is by Tuesday, Puerto Rico, U.S., British Virgin Islands, better chance of rain. And some of this unsettled weather will just move through the entire Caribbean, but especially in our northern sections as we get into early and mid next week, that rain chance is going to be shooting up. Now, as promised, I want to uh, show you this system here that's been 
pinwheeling around over toward Canada. So this is Canada here. You see uh, Halifax, you get toward uh, Cape Breton, uh, we get over toward uh, Newfoundland, and you see again some of that snow that's around. The system's offshore, but it's spinning in some of that snow as we work our way through the weekend. So we could see some higher totals in the Atlantic region of Canada, and you see it's still spinning around throwing back some snow on Monday to uh, Newfoundland. St. John's will be right on the edge of that rain-snow mix. We'll probably get a little bit of both. And then as that pulls away, snow on the backside of this as we work our way into Tuesday. Super busy pattern. So Jamaica, the rain chance will start to bump up some Sunday into Monday. Cayman Islands will start to see it going up by Monday. We'll see about a 40% chance and some overcast uh, conditions. Trinidad and Tobago, we're seeing the dust around mainly dry. Grenada, back through St. Vincent, the Grenadines, rain chance the next few days stays limited with that dust. Same thing, Barbados, rain chance 20% and a 20% chance in St. Lucia, still some dust, but thankfully the system to the north will help out. Martinique, rain chance holding at 20% the next few days, a 20 to 30% chance in Dominica and a 20 to 30% chance of seeing a passing shower in Guadeloupe as we go through the weekend. Antigua and Barbuda, rain chance 20 to 30%. Same thing, St. Kitts, Nevis and Montserrat, rain chance through the weekend, 20 to 30 percent Anguilla and St. Bart's. About a 20 percent chance, St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia. And the rain chance, 40 percent tomorrow in Puerto Rico, and a 40 percent chance on Sunday, but it gets higher early next week. Same thing in the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Early next week, we'll be seeing that rain chance getting higher. Dominican Republic spotty showers gets higher early next week. Same thing as we work our way into Haiti. Rain chance about 20% on Sunday, but upwards of a 50 to 60% chance of rain Monday into Tuesday across Haiti. Bahamas, again, rain chance will be shooting up Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday of next week. Turks and Caicos will be seeing it going way up Monday into Tuesday. Rain chance in Cuba going up on Sunday as the front starts to work in. And about a 10 to 20% chance in Belize, not too high, about a 30% chance as we go through the weekend, uh, Yucatan of Mexico. Rain chance 20% in Aruba, watching some of the dust, still some of that dust around in Curacao and Bonaire. Rain chance at 20%, much higher as we work our way into our Saturday in Bermuda. Bermuda, very active pattern. And not only do we get some of the rain, we get some of those gusty winds. Costa Rica, Panama, rain chance 30 to 40%, holding on to about a 20% chance in Guyana and Suriname, down from what we saw about a week ago in northern Venezuela. Venezuela rain chance about 30%. So busy. Again, watching everything going on in the tropics, keeping an eye on the next uh, hurricane season. Thick dust around in the uh, eastern uh, Caribbean. Large storm system approaching from the U.S. Rain chance will get higher very soon, especially Monday and Tuesday for a lot of us. Gusty winds and some of those dangerous seas. I will keep you posted. I'll keep you posted on that upcoming hurricane season, which starts June 1st. And again, you'll see a lot of those forecasts out there. Take those with a grain of salt. I got you covered right here. Have a great weekend ahead.